Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is going to be kind of a different way to start the video. Um, I wasn't even going to put this on the video, honestly. It's my Honda Civic I've got over here on the dyno. Um, but I was playing with the, the cam degree and just found like some ridiculous power. Let me show you. Okay, so uh, this morning I came in and I had dynoed last night. We put a new turbo on and this turbo was about a thousand RPM laggier than the old Precision was. So the old one spooled at 6,000 RPM, this one spools at 7,000 RPM, which seems crazy, but I figured what I could do is change my cam degree and move the power band up a thousand RPM and take advantage of the fact that this motor can easily go to 10,000 RPM. Okay, let me just show you. So this, both of these dyno graphs are today on 33 pounds of boost and my computer targets the exact same air fuel ratio and I have not changed the timing map at all. So this is just purely cam angle and I've changed it three or four times to get from this baseline to where I am now. You can see down here, we lost um, about 40 torque to 7,000 RPM. Remember the old turbo spooled at 6,000, the new one spooled at 7,000, so we don't really need it to be better here because it's just not gonna make the boost anyways. And the new turbo makes power out later. So if you look up at the top, uh, hold on, let me switch to this screen really quick so I can scroll with the mouse. Um, right here at the top, the other one, like when I had the cam degree different, it peaked out at 553. And now that I moved it, it made 639. So about 90 horsepower different, and we gave up about 40 torque in this section between six and 7,000 RPM. So for a drag car, this is like a massive win. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the boost all the way up to its maximum, and I'll go ahead and film that pull, uh, and just kind of show you what, uh, you know, like a 700-ish horsepower Civic looks like on the dyno. Now that I'm done with the Honda, uh, I want to get back on to my 350Z project. Um, so, that brings me to today. Um, I didn't film it because it's really boring, but uh, if I have them, I'll throw some screenshots of what I did. Uh, that turbo is a 6266 Precision. I was able to take off the bigger housing that I bought and put uh, go from a 1.06 to a 0.82. So I went down uh, about 20 or 30 percent in exhaust housing size and I it, it will bring the spool earlier in the RPM just a little bit so that we'll have enough usable RPM across the curve to get to the horsepower goal hopefully so today um, I'll just be dialing that in and raising the boost level and trying to flatten the curve to try to get uh, to wherever our endpoint is I, I would like to see at least you know more than 450 um, 500 would be like fantastic but I don't want to put it in the universe because it might not happen uh, but I did discover one more really disappointing thing and this is definitely a huge factor in why it may have not been uh, acting correctly. Uh, after I cut those wastegate holes and welded in the wastegates, I thought I cleaned out the pipes good enough and got all the, all the metal shavings and stuff out, but unfortunately one piece of metal <laughs> I did not get out, it must have just been stuck somewhere. And that one piece of metal went through the turbo uh, manifold and up into the turbo wheel and chewed up the edge of the wheel. Uh, so right now we are on kind of a damaged 6266. So kind of take the numbers with a grain of salt. Um, based on my first pull that I just made, it looks like the boost does come up faster and it does kind of, it doesn't want to maintain turbo speed with the wheel being kind of messed up. I would love to see just 15 pounds straight across the graph um, and see where that got me. Okay, so on the second pull, I'm noticing obviously that my boost is kind of falling off. So I'm working with the duty, uh, the duty cycle on the boost controller to try to get um, the boost to hold more flat. We make 13, like 13 and a half pounds of boost. 
I just wanted to hold that number all the way across and so far I added some duty and it didn't it brought it up instead of falling from 13.5 down to 9 now it's falling from 13 to 10 so I just need to give it a little bit more and try to flatten that 13 curve out and we'll see what happens but right now it makes you know 13 right here and with the smaller housing this torque is about 50 higher than it was before uh, before we were making maybe like 350 torque now we're making 400 torque so the housing is helping a lot and uh, hopefully it'll carry through part of the falling off on this upper end is probably the fact that my turbo wheel is kind of chewed up so um, there may not be much I can do about this it's probably futile at this point but I'm just gonna go ahead and max out what I have here and then uh, you know possibly I'll just change the turbo out again in the future I just made the final pull. I've got the boost controller set as aggressively as I can. It was able to hold the boost a little bit, but not all the way to red line. Still kind of falls off, but not as much. And uh, right back at 440 horsepower, which is really annoying. Um, however, the curve is a lot nicer than it was before on the big housing. Um, 5,000 RPM, you know, looks really nice. Uh, we don't want the torque hitting super hard right here and like breaking the rod. So it's a little softer through here finally makes like about 400 torque. <clears throat> like I said, that's about 50 more than before um, with a peak of uh, 440, so the same peak horsepower. I'm guessing that's just because the wheel is broken because obviously that turbo can make more power. But okay, I think that's, that's as far as I can go on this setup <laughs> with a broken turbo, which is just annoying. We're never gonna make it to 500, but I figured I'd show you guys that anyway because at least we're making some progress. And this is going to be like a lot more fun to drive in the meantime because at least my usable power band, you know, 4,500 to 75, somewhere in there, it's all, it's all pretty powerful. So, okay. So <laughs> I wasn't going to film this, but I thought it was pretty funny and relevant. Uh, do you guys remember Raven's car, the black 350Z, this one right here? So we finally got around to pulling the motor after his, you know, most recent blow up shenanigans. This little guy has made like 22 pounds of boost on a stock motor before. But anyway, <clears throat> this thing was cruising around. It wasn't on a high boost or anything. Probably 14 pounds of boost. You know, 450-ish horsepower probably. And uh, he was just on the highway one day and the whole motor just let go and grenaded. And you see like in there, there's like metal pieces. <laughs> I think it chucked a rod out the side of this block. But then look at this. This is what's crazy. We took the upper plenum off and I have never seen carnage like at this level coming off of a motor before that was all just laying in the intake manifold i'm not even totally sure how that got up there yet we're gonna do some more investigating but i thought it was okay we got his whole motor out and it's actually crazy how bad this blow up was not only did he blow a hole in the side of the block but he blew one in the back of the block too i gotta show you guys this it's pretty crazy so i didn't even notice it at first but if you look underneath the motor mount we saw these little chunks and you can see the hole right in there <laughs> oh, that's not good. And then come around the back, and what do you know? Another hole right there. You can see Raven's car out there in the parking lot. Uh, the motor's out of it, and it's just sitting there empty. No motor, no trans. So we really need to decide what's going back in it. Um, I'll just be thinking about that. But I was going to say, comment below, let me know what you guys would do. And um, I have some other interesting Nissan stuff uh, next video. So I'll see you guys in like a week or so. Uh, take it easy and see you next time.